universities. So if you want to study in the University of Lincoln or any other school without paying so much money, this video is for you. So I'm going to be telling you my story in this video and how I got a scholarship at the University of Lincoln. And I'll also be giving you scholarship tips. Now, whether or not you want to study in the University of Lincoln, this video would help you if you need scholarships. So let's start with my story. When I was trying to come to the UK, I knew that I would need more money than I had, but I thought some privileges that I have would shield me from a lot of financial struggles. Let me just break it down. I did not know that I would be in a situation where I would be looking for money to come to the UK. I reached a point where it just seemed like, see Ada, it's either you make this happen for yourself or it would never happen. And when I reached that stage where my privileges could not save me, I had to do the work. Now financially, I got some help from some loved ones, but that's not what we're talking about in this video. We're talking about the scholarship I got. So I checked the university of Lincoln before I applied and I saw that they had this £4,000 discount for all international students. I did not even need to apply for that because it was automatic. But then as I did with every other university I applied to, I checked their scholarships which brings me to one of my points. See, whatever university you want to go to, they have scholarships. Especially if you're an international student, don't keep money on the table. Get as many scholarships as you can. So I checked the University of Lincoln and I realized that they had a scholarship called the Global Excellence Scholarship. I read about it and I realized that getting it would give me 50% off the tuition fee. The minimum requirement was for you to have at least a second class upper or a first class in your undergraduate days and you have to apply for it you write essays to prove why you are deserving of the scholarship now in that scholarship i realized that there were many times you could apply depending on the time you are getting your admission there are some months that you can actually apply for the scholarship so what did i do i applied for the scholarship and guess what happened I failed the scholarship so I didn't get anything like I just got an email telling me unfortunately and this was at the point where it just seemed like all hope was lost but you know one thing about when you have a vision even if things are not happening around you to suggest that the vision will come to pass once you have that thing in your mind it will most likely will come to pass the scholarship board rejected my application I did what many applicants don't do I applied again and I'm saying this to say that a lot of times you get no and you just accept no from a scholarship board. Unless if maybe you are not allowed to apply again or maybe the deadline has passed. When they tell you a no, it is okay to go again. And that's what I did. Now to go again, remember the saying, if you are doing something the same way, expecting a different result, that is insanity. Now, what I did was to get my application and look at it and ask myself, Ada, see, why did they reject your application? Why did they not give you the scholarship? Now, when I looked at it from a non-biased perspective, I realized that, hmm, the scholarship essays I wrote were too booky. I don't know how to explain, they were too academic. They were just saying things like, okay, I got this degree, I got this grade, I got this, 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 this. And see, once you are applying for a scholarship, bear in mind that see, there is no grade you have that no one already has. Is it a first class? You're not the only one that has a first class. Is it a second class or part? You are not the only one. So when you are leading with your grades, there are so many people leading with even better grades. And what would distinguish you would be your story. And that's something I learned. Now, as I'm talking, I'll be giving you tips. So just ensure that you are grabbing as many tips as possible. I read my essays and they were so rigid. And you know what I did? I decided to pour out my heart in my scholarship essay. Now, when you want to write your essay, think about it from an unbiased perspective. If you were a marker, what would you think about this candidate? Are you just a candidate that will say, oh, I got a first class, I got a second class, I got this, I got that. Okay, what have you done? What experiences do you have? How have you impacted lives? What plans do you have to impact lives? Because this scholarship boards not just throw their money just as anyone. They want to see a track record. They want to see that you are a viable investment. So I forgot all my grades and whatever, whatever. I just started writing. 
And in writing, I literally poured out, like, I poured out my heart. When I read my essay, I was like, damn, <laughs> like, damn. I started by giving a quote regarding something that aligns with my life mission. I talked about my passion for empowering lives. I talked about what I have done all my life because sincerely from the time I knew myself, I've been doing humanitarian work. When I was in secondary school, I worked in an orphanage home. Like I've done lots of things that are humanitarian in nature. Now, by the way, the course I studied was social work and that is a helping profession. So all my track records show that I am qualified to even want to apply as a social worker. Oh, by the way, for the Global Excellence Scholarship, before they give you, you would have gotten an admission letter from the University of Lincoln. So I already had that. Now, I was showing them my track record. I showed them what I had done in law school regarding humanity. I made them see my heart that see I love to help people. I back it up with my grades then. I back it up with my other experiences. I talked about my future goals, my plans for life. I talked about how the scholarship will make a difference in my life and how basically without a scholarship, I won't even be able to study in the University of Lincoln, which was true. And when I was done, like, you know when you pour out your heart, you would know. So now when you want to write your essay, pour out your heart. There's a beauty in storytelling. If you are not a storyteller, hmm, that's going to be a problem because you have to learn how to tell stories. I'm not saying you should go and be writing African folklore, but your scholarship essays would have to have a rhythm. It has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and they have to sequentially make sense. Now, as far as I can remember, for the Global Excellence Scholarship, we had to write two different essays. The first essay was, to talk about your academic achievements. Then the second essay was to talk about your aspirations. If I can remember correctly, because it's been years now. Now, whatever your essay is about, ensure that you are still telling a story. Also, emphasize on your need for the Global Excellence Scholarship or whatever scholarship you are going to get. Now, bear in mind that when you are emphasizing on your need, see, these people are trying to give out money because scholarship may come free to you, but it comes at the cost to them. They are paying something to have you. So you have to be a good investment. And if you have it all together, you have it all figured out, you have the money, why would they waste their money funding you? Now, if you come from a humble background, that's something to include in your scholarship essay. If you lost a loved one, maybe a mom, a dad, that's something to include in your scholarship essay. Now, when I say include it, don't now make your scholarship essay a pity party. Because mm -mm, nobody wants... The funny thing is that, have you noticed that in life, people don't give you when you don't have. People give you more when you have. Let me explain. If a celebrity comes asking for money, the likelihood of them being given money is high compared to someone that you know is downtrodden and broke and broken because somehow it's not making sense unless if you're a selfless person that just wants to give without expecting anything in return. Now, as much as possible, listen to me because there are two things I'm saying. Express your need for the scholarship, but try not to sound too much like a charity case. So when you're expressing your need, whether it may be the loss of a loved one, your inability to fund yourself, do it in little words, but let it cut deep. Like, let it be strong, but that's it. Don't start going on and on and on and make the whole character of your um, essay about how broke you are. Mm -mm. Because it's not just about you being broke or you not being able to like fund yourself. It's also about you being a good investment. So don't just overdwell on that. Something else I see a lot of people making as a mistake in terms of scholarship essays, especially Nigerians, would be to talk down on Nigeria. Like saying things like, oh, I need to leave the country because of maybe stability. Because Be careful. Be careful. Be careful how you talk down on your country to these people. Because it reflects very poorly to them because exactly so whatever need you are expressing make it short and sweet and try to appear humble but not like it is finished for you there is just a slight difference like 
it's very dicey i know but you just have to strike that right balance and that's why cm the scholarship essay is very important i beg you give it to someone else after you've written to read and review please see these things some like now i had the lock for me i was able to write the second time you may not have that opportunity yours may just be once firstly start writing the scholarship essays as soon as possible no procrastination because no procrastination you don't know when they will get back to you you don't know you don't even know anything so just start writing even if it's just a draft one line start writing because over time as you progress as the days go by you start to flesh out those ideas now when you are done and you've written out your scholarship essays give it to somebody to read please and this person you have to be very careful the kind of person you give it to not the kind of person that will tell you oh it is nice all those friends that will tell you oh if you are perfect oh you are good mm -mm. give it to someone that is truthful if you have anyone in your circle that is blunt that's the person you should give it to because they will tell you the truth without mind seeing words now it is better they tell you the truth that maybe your essay is more nice you can do better than you go and give someone else oh you're doing well you're doing well you're doing well and this may be a once in a lifetime opportunity for you i've reviewed a friend's scholarship essay before and when i saw it i was like jesus thank god you showed me you because ah and i started highlighting this 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 it was when i started looking at people's essays i realized the reason why a lot of people don't even get their scholarships right because you don't put yourself in the shoes of your interviewer or your marker you act like they know you you guys are jeans five and six that's not how it works they don't know you imagine putting your application about ogun states you are applying to an international audience when you say ogun state you say ogun state nigeria because they don't know anywhere the highest they would know is maybe lagos and even if you are putting lagos i also say lagos nigeria some of these little 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 things Imagine in your essay are writing about maybe something significant that happened in your service here. You now put NYSC, National Youth Service. Do you think they know what that is? They don't know. So for every like little little thing that is peculiar to us, for instance, as Nigerians, you have to have explanations to those things in your essays. Now I've had a couple of people reaching out to me on Instagram telling me, help me review my Global Excellence Scholarship, help me. And the truth is, I cannot review anybody's Global Excellence Scholarship for free because viewing is a job I do and I am extremely meticulous. I'm not going to be spending hours reviewing your essays when I have a review service. So if you want me to be that person that would look through your essays, then click the link in the description box. I'm going to put my service there or you can just send me a DM on Instagram and we'll talk about it. Now, if you don't even want to use my service, that is okay. But well, please give it to somebody to review. I beg you. Yeah. Now, when you're writing your essay, the first paragraph is one of the most important things, even not the most important. That's the first thing they will see. And you know what they say about first impressions. When you start strong, you would have a lot of grace being given to you. You can start with a quote, a story, just something catchy. See, if you try your best to start with something catchy and it's not working, don't force it. Just write. Whatever you do, you're going to have the introduction, which is going to be very catchy. The body of your essay, which would contain all the fleshy parts. Then the conclusion, which will be you just summarizing what you said, not you introducing new ideas in the conclusion. Now, in the essay, you should be talking about things specific to the essay. So, when I read your scholarship essay, for instance, for a Global Excellence Scholarship, I should not be in doubt what the essay is for. Don't just do a general essay, generic essay that can be used for any scholarship. No, they have to see that you've been intentional about applying for that particular scholarship. Now, when you are talking about your need for the scholarship, try your best not to sound entitled. Refrain from using phrases like, I deserve the scholarship because... You don't deserve the scholarship because of anything. That is way too direct. Don't appear 
braggadocious and don't appear like entitled or just be in the middle at the very least now i know that for the global excellence scholarship the essay they have a word count stick to the word count if you have a word count of three thousand words don't go and be writing one thousand words don't go and be writing four thousand words check it stick to it now i think for the global excellence scholarship there was a particular font and font size but if you are applying for any scholarship and you've not been given any direction on the font size the general rule is to use font size 12 and ideally use font times new roman some people can use arial then you should have double spacing in your essay now your essay should contain your motivation for writing the essay or your motivation for wanting to study the course you're trying to study whether that's a personal motivation of maybe your lived experiences a professional motivation whatever it is they want to see your heart also ensure that you're talking about your leadership skills and abilities and not just you being descriptive and say oh i'm a leader how are you a leader what have you done examples also you should have future goals and your future goals would have to be charitable your future goal should not be, i want to be a senator not because i want to be rich your future goal has to be something that would make it make sense to them why you deserve the scholarship and that will just make things easier for you now whatever the case ensure you are selling yourself like that's why i say read reread give someone to read and ask yourself see have i sold myself enough because you're not going to be called upon to defend your <laughs> scholarship essays you just be either given or not given now i remember being in the salon um, at that time i had gotten my cars i would gotten my four thousand pounds discount and at that point it just looked like i'm never going to be able to go to the uk now i was in the salon when i just saw an email it was the case of congratulations you've been given the scholarship and i froze i was like jesus jesus i got the scholarship like ah <laughs> even now like thinking about it i still can like have goosebumps because i didn't think going to the uk would have been possible but you know when you have uncommon faith i remember that time one of my friends was like join this what god cannot do doesn't exist program i was like what is that i started learning that's how i joined though then i joined Pastor Jerry Eze actually said that you're going to get uncommon favor this week and your visa. And at that point, see, I <laughs> I need to explain to you that at that point, the social work department had sent me an email saying that they are rejecting my offer, like they are collecting it back because I had not fulfilled the conditions of the offer. Like play, like play. That's how I got the congratulations email, and I was like, Jesus. I have this friend of my princess. I remember always telling her about how, oh my God, how am I going to do this thing? I don't have money. Hey, and she would tell me, Ada, God is your father. And that statement used to annoy me that time because I'm telling you, I don't have money. I'm stressed out. I'm worried. I'm tense. I need solution because I'm a very logical person. I'm a very practical person. Like, okay, what's happening? Tell me, tell me. And I wanted to hear like, okay, okay, okay. This money is coming from here. Stop telling me God is your, mm -mm. tell me. And she'd be like, Ada, rest. God is your father. And one time I was like, I'm going away. And the way God proved himself as my father, it was very humbling. I was like, truly, God is my father. I can rest. I should have just rested. And I feel that was God's way of people teaching me that. See, I'm your father. Baby, rest. And the good thing is that God gives us wisdom to know what to do at the right time. I don't think it was by my power that I was rejected and I applied again. And that just could not have come from my brain. And I still am very grateful to God for making it happen. Now, when he gave me scholarship, so let me give you a tip. In case you get your scholarship after you've gotten your class, you would have to apply for an updated cast so that they would change lots of things there. So that happened when they changed it. And because of that, I had literally paid like half of my tuition fee thanks to the scholarship. Although because social work is a two years course, that scholarship only applied to the first year. So the first year I paid half because they had given me half scholarship. Then the second year I had to pay the full 14,900 pounds. So in the whole i could have paid twenty nine thousand eight hundred pounds but i ended up paying about twenty two thousand pounds 
I don't know if my math is correct, but something along that line. Still expensive, but I'm very grateful. Now, if this video has helped you, I'm linking up another video that I think will be helpful. If you like this video, please, I would appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up because that boosts this video and I would really love that. And if you don't subscribe to my channel, please do so. I didn't even introduce myself. Okay, my name is Ada and I'm also known as The Illegal Pepe. Now, until I see you next time, stay blessed. Let's remain happy and bye, best friends.